Certainly, or perhaps not, Dr. John Hall will be talking about voices in one's head. And, and you, know, you know, going into this, uh, let me just say one thing about Dr. Hall first, and, and, and then we're going to get into some things. But uh, I've got to tell you, um, I have met individuals, who victims, who were victims of electronic harassment, surveillance, and uh, gang stalking. I, 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 going over some old files... Back in 19, uh, 1993, I found one in particular that was extremely heinous. And looking back on it, I did not recognize it for what it was. But I can tell you this, that that's exactly what it was. And we'll get into that more during the second and third hours. But uh, we are going to have a, a guest on for the second and third hour. Go to his website. It is yeah. satweapons.com. Dr. John Hall, I got to tell you, I've heard him on Coast to Coast. I've, uh, in fact, I, I listened to uh, his la- uh, one of a recent interview, I believe, with Zeph Daniel on YouTube. You can find it on YouTube. Dr. John Hall, he's a medical doctor in San Antonio. Uh, I wonder if his ears were burning when we were talking about the city council there. Uh, of course, that's in Texas. He's the author of A New Breed Satellite Terrorism in America. He's a board-certified diplomat of the American Board of Anesthesiologists, okay, and a member of the American Academy of Pain Medicine. Doc, I could use you. I'm in constant pain. Um, Anyway, he's also an active member of the Mind Science Foundation, and that's dedicated to the study of human consciousness. He sits on the medical committee of the Human Rights Organization, Freedom from Covert Harassment and Surveillance. Now, as a surveillance specialist for the last uh, couple of decades, I can tell you that uh, I know the backside of that, and hopefully we're going to learn about the front side of that. And on Coast to Coast, uh, Dr. Hall has talked about his work with the Victims of electronic harassment, stalking, and mind control. Believe it or not, yes, there are victims like that out there. And how this CIA NSA technology is being used to track and intimidate people, I can pretty much verify that as well. Folks, I want to welcome Dr. We want to welcome Dr. John Hall to the program. Once again, his website is satweapons.com that's satweapons.com Dr. Hall, welcome Doug, Joe how are you guys tonight? Very well, sir You had to do it, didn't you, Doug? You you had to bring up the San Antonio City Council didn't you? You you know, I didn't, believe it or not I didn't (laughs) make the connection I did not make the connection until I (laughs) <laughs> One yeah. thing I would like to clarify for your listeners, that was not put up to a vote. That law was imposed on us. Um, you know, amazing. A, a law that's effect, essentially going to affect every business, uh, every individual, uh, hiring and firing, um, freedom of speech, the whole nine yards, they didn't put up to a vote. So you know, it, that actually has a lot of people here upset, and there's a lot of people here that are disgruntled with our city council and our mayor. So, Wow. Wow. Well, and I know you're, you're uh, you come at things from a Christian viewpoint, uh, and and uh, we have a largely Christian audience. And uh, just for context of of our conversation, so you can't be too happy about this. No, and, and you know the bottom line is this: you know whether you're homosexual or heterosexual, that's a, a sexual preference, and really what goes on in the bedroom shouldn't even you know, come to light. Um, I mean, it's, you know, I know, you know, I run a fairly big office with, you know, multiple physicians as partners and lots of employees. And, you know, that's not something that's even on the job application, you know. So, I mean, wow. I, it really should be a non-issue um, at best. Uh, and, you know, certainly the people of faith that live here are a little upset because the as the the way the law at least has originally read, supposedly they're making some changes to a, you know, to accommodate freedom of speech and freedom of faith. But the way the law originally read, if you're a person of faith, you can't hold office. Um, huh. And of course, I, I don't think it's so much to keep people of faith out of office as it is to make sure that it's only Democrats. 
in office here. And, and even though Texas is, a, for the most part, a Republican state, San Antonio is mostly Hispanic, which tend to vote mostly Democrat. So San Antonio yep. typically has a Democratic city council and a Democratic mayor. But that's and, and La Raza, yeah. 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 Well, and, it, 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 oh, wait a minute. You said it's changing? Uh, it, it's, yeah. It's, wow. Okay. Well, not you know we are still predominantly Hispanic, but there's a large portion of uh, Hispanic voters that are finally starting to see that you know that the handouts and the welfare and the stuff that's promised to them to, by the Democratic Party is largely slavery. You know, I mean, welfare is a form of slavery. So, mm. well, well, wow. Well, it, it's interesting. And, and again, uh, uh, Dr. Hall, I, I did not uh, mean to bring that uh, subject up and, and honestly like i said it it, uh, it never even crossed my mind uh and, and until i i looked it down again and hey yeah you're from san antonio um doctor i'll tell you what i know you've been on coast to coast i know you you know you've spent time with george norris i have uh tonight uh we're going to turn you loose no holds barred no holds barred and uh give us the give us the complete uh, story of what in the world is going on with gang stalking, with with with, with surveillance, electronic surveillance, this harassment. And I know, and again, I've heard you talk, but I uh, I know that folks in our audience have, have many have not, and uh, we have a wor- worldwide audience. So, uh, where do you want to start? Well, I think um, probably a good start for the, those of your listeners that haven't heard of this topic is kind of a brief description of what we're really talking about when we say a, a gang stalking, or actually I prefer the term organized stalking or electronic harassment. And that's essentially, um, there's a large group of individuals, and this is worldwide, it's not just here. Uh, I get emails every day from just about every country uh, on the planet um, is essentially a group of people that have noticed themselves to be stalked by, you know, organized stalkers. This isn't loved ones. This isn't an, an ex-spouse. Or um, it may be private investigators, and I know in the United States usually is private investigators that are uh, <laughs> accessing some technology that um, they've been allowed to access. That is CIA, NSA-based technology. That's electromagnetic weaponry. Um, that allows for you to be tracked by your brain waves or your EEG and allows for your EEG to be manipulated. And most of these people will um, notice the stalking first, uh, then notice tinnitus or ringing in the ears, and slowly the ringing in the ears degrades down to hearing the voices um, of the people that are actually surveilling you, um, typically harassing you, describing your whereabouts in a building or what your plans are, or what you're doing, what you're wearing. Um, um, that combined with directed energy attack, which would be burning of the skin, burning of the eyes, burning of the genitals, involuntary body motion, uh, heart speeding up and down, um, some severe reflux or, or um, a heartburn that uh, comes and goes. Um, without treatment, whether you treat it or not, uh, headaches, blurred vision, um, all of it geared to basically mimic delusional disorder or schizophrenia. Uh, and it seems like the goal in most of these victims is to have them discredited. And oftentimes they'll plant people around the victim in their neighborhood or in their occupation um, to verbally discredit them, you know, spread rumors, you know, put uh, plant seeds that... They're a drug dealer. They're a pedophile. It, it, the typical um, discreditation campaign that you um, see in the DOD, in the military. Right. And are, are we not talking uh, motive-wise, uh, marginalization of one's views, for example, or uh, uh, yeah, vilify, nullify? Uh, it, it's okay. So, so there's a purpose behind this. And, and uh, who are the victims? I mean, I mean, a typical victim, who would that be? Uh, a nobody, essentially. Um, you know, we've done, through Freedom from Covert Surveillance and Harassment, we've done surveys of the victims to a, a large extent. So we can, uh, we do have some demographics, and, you know, 70% of the victims um, are, are female, usually 35 to 50. Um, most of them have also complained of sexual assault, physical sexual assault, as well as electronic sexual assault. Along with it, it, it doesn't it doesn't seem to um, it seems to be equal um, among you know Christian, uh, non-Christian, you know black, white, racial lines. 
Um, so basically, the, from the way it looks to most of us that are studying this you know, scientifically, um, as if each perpetrator group in each major city that's been allowed access to this technology can use it carte blanche however they want to use it, but if you compile all the numbers together for the appropriate agency that's probably monitoring how this works, uh, it ends up a random sample at the top. So are, are we seeing somewhat of a, um, oh, I don't know, maybe a uh, random testing of, of, of this technology uh, essentially, because of the randomness? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, all essentially right. that's what we're seeing. Now, you know, I do have, you know, I have, have seen a number of whistleblowers and, I've had people come to visit me and talk to me in San Antonio that are former NSA, that are former CIA, that are former reconnaissance office, um, that are whistleblowers um, that have certainly um, been victimized. Uh, and that's a pretty easy one, you know, when you hear their story and you hear, you know, what they blew the whistle on and now they're being victimized, at least you've got a reason. That's not the majority of the victims. The majority of the victims are professional people. The the demographics that we've studied, most of these people have at least a high school degree. Most of them are college educated. A lot of them are professionals, doctors, lawyers, um, professional people. And they can pinpoint the date when they noticed the stalking, and they can pinpoint the date when they um, began to hear voices and experience directed energy attacks. So this isn't the classic case of a schizophrenic or someone with severe delusional disorder that, you know, when you get their history that, you know, they've kind of always not been quite right. You know, schizophrenia especially is is overdiagnosed in this population. Schizophrenia in a male shows up at about 16 to 18, and a female can be a little bit later, but is usually at its peak um, by 20 or 21. You know, these are people that, you know, were successful, had professional lives, were making money, had families, you know, we're functioning well with no uh, history of mental illness that all of a sudden at the age of 40 uh, are hearing voices and, you know, being attacked. And, and most of them have good evidence of the stalking part of it, pictures, photos. Interesting. Interesting. It, it brings me to mind uh, that story with Vince Foster back in the uh, 1990s where that Patrick Knowlton who found the body and that uh, – of, of Vince Foster, and had described what he saw, which was inconsistent with what was revealed ultimately, and and he was menaced by a group of individuals subsequent to his uh, going public, and I, I remember it in real time listening to Gordon Liddy when Gordon Liddy had a talk show, and uh, Knowlton went to him. I believe I believe it was Knowlton that went to him, and uh, Chris Ruddy, who wrote the book The Strange Death of Vince Foster, had spent time with Knowlton because he didn't believe him. He didn't believe that, that uh, he was being menaced in this fashion. And what you're describing actually took place, you know, at that time. So uh, to a lesser extent, I don't I don't know about the mind or the electronic aspect of it, but certainly the menacing, physical menacing of, of this individual did. Um, so it, it's it's been around for a while, hasn't it? Well, the organized stalking part has been around since COINTELPRO. You know, the FBI did that, uh, you know, in the 60s to, you know, political groups that they found undesirable, um, you know, would, you know, leave notes or leave letters to a husband that appeared to be written by the wife and, you know, to to put stress in a relationship, um, you know, shut down bank accounts, you know, take money out of accounts, things like that, and basically to turn a group inward against each other. And, you know, that certainly is what the the organized stalking part of it does. And we see that all the time with um, cell phone spoofing in these victims. Um, almost always it's a, a lot of times a married couple, and one will be victimized, and one is either non-victimized or, at worst, controlled. And um, the difference being that, you know, if I put voices in your head that sound like me or or a female voice, well, you know you're being harassed. If I put voices in your head that sound like your voice, um, you know everybody. Uh, if you break down a thought process, you know when you when you're reading a book, you're actually hearing your own voice in your head as you read. And if I put your voice in your head, then that becomes a thought, and, and a lot of people will act on that thought, and that's essentially how subliminal control works that way. I, I can verify this, and, and this is something that uh, I'm not necessarily proud of, and, and Joe and I can. Uh, we, we've had occasion in the past being uh, investigators, you know, in the private sector by profession, 
for well myself for over two and a half decades in you know cell phone spoofing um we've done that <laughs> i can tell you we've done that and it, 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 it for, works beautifully <laughs> it, it's it's an amazing Yes, yes, and, and it's not something, something I'm proud of. And it's, it was done when we did it. Uh, it was done for a specific purpose. It, it was limited to, well, I won't even get into it. But the fact is, it's easy to do. It, it doesn't. I mean, it's not that difficult to do. Um, but what you're saying here is, is there's this. Uh, I believe you're saying that there's this huge uh, uh, operation. I mean, MK Ultra. You mentioned. We really haven't. MK Ultra is, is still going on, isn't it? I, uh, well, this I mean, is a continuation of MK Ultra. You know, MK Ultra started right after the Korean War and was the, uh, you know, several, uh, so a couple of almost a couple of hundred sub projects of all geared at con- remotely controlling the human organism, uh, and it went from as, as benign studies as just studying children's um, behavior patterns on playgrounds by visually. Um, surveilling them, all the way to Jose Delgado's um, Stymo receiver and chipping the brain and trying to control people by stimulating certain parts of the brain. And, you know, I will tell you this is um, Jose Delgado, uh, I think in the 80s, uh, had a, um, did an interview and he actually was implanting brains to do his control. You know, and as you probably know, he wrote a book uh, called um, Electromagnetics to um, develop a psycho uh, psycho civilized society. You know he's a firm believer that um, that man should not be allowed to uh, govern himself. That I mean, if we could chip all of us at birth, that would be the thing to do, and then have an elite at the top that can control the masses. He was a hmm. firm believer in that. And in the 80s, he actually came forth and said that you know what, you know, that we've got the technology now where we no longer have to chip someone to do this kind of control; that it can be done by broadcasted frequency. And that was late 70s, early 80s. And amazingly enough, some of the earliest, at least earliest, legitimate complaints that can be verified of people suffering from this were five or six prisoners from the Utah State Prison who in um, 85 to 90 came forward, uh, wrote uh, legal affidavits saying that they were put in solitary confinement where they noticed such a strong electromagnetic field in the room that a lot of them could not even get out of bed or get off the floor. They would try to stand, and they couldn't. They all noticed tinnitus ringing in their ears, and the tinnitus slowly degraded to hearing voices. And, as you know, of course, these guys you know, weren't exactly rocket scientists. They didn't know how to explain it. But they did notice that the voices that they were hearing seemed to be responding to their thoughts, that if they would think something bad, they would get zapped, uh, if they would think whatever the voices were telling them to think, then they would be left alone for a little while and given a break from the torture. And this wasn't just one prisoner. This was five that um, writ, uh, wrote affidavits and also uh, talked about other prisoners who had experienced the same thing. Mm. Okay. Well, uh, where, where, how do you want to start with this? Uh, this is to, to me. This is such a vast topic. Yeah, I mean, we we can go into so many different directions and and that end up in a lot of different rabbit holes. Um, yeah, I mean, could, to what's used to to pull these different um, tactics off on people. You know, we have a range from smart meters. You talk about satellites. We know the the towers that they've put up. Uh, how it's done through magnetics, through frequencies. Um, if we can get into that a little bit, I guess the give us sure. a basic breakdown of well, what you've experienced well, and, and research. And, I'll t- and, and to start, I'll just give you a, a brief history of how I got involved with this because I'm an anesthesiologist and a pain management physician. So, um, trust me, I, I never in a million years would have dreamed that I was going to be the spearhead against this type of technology. Uh, it, it, you know, kind of was forced on me. Um, mm-hmm. I. Um, um, Knew a girl here in San Antonio that came to me and um, knew her well, knew there was no drug issues, no mental health issues, um, was hearing voices and being stalked. And as soon as she told me about the hearing voices part, I already knew a little bit about this technology uh, and thought, you know, well, you know, most physicians are going to diagnose you as crazy and put you on a bunch of meds, but give you the benefit of the doubt and, and let's see. So... Uh, did some counter surveillance uh, myself, and we 
um, bugged her condo with uh, audio devices. Uh, she didn't want cameras in there, and I understand, you know, young young woman. So we right. used audio, uh, digital voice activated audio. Um, had people watching her. You know, I took part in some of the counter surveillance myself. And the people counter surveilling her began getting followed. Um, and this is very obvious. To, for those who don't know the layout of San Antonio, this was in downtown San Antonio. I live on the outskirts, way out in the country in a rural setting in north of San Antonio. And on a weeknight at midnight when you see the same three cars that you saw in the parking lot of the condominium complex following you, 20 miles north to your driveway, it, it's pretty obvious. You know, at that point, that's not surveillance. That's that's direct harassment. So we wrote the plate numbers down, ran the plates. The plates all came back to a um, private investigative agency ran by a former FBI agent who hired nothing but his family members. Um, here in Texas, as a PI, you're licensed by the Department of Public Safety, which is our highway patrol, and you can get a list of employees. So right. check the check the list. Um, in the audio uh, surveillance part, she did have people um, breaking in. Uh, they were putting rohypnol, a date rape drug, in her food and bottled water, and subliminally controlling her to drink where they put the drug. Once she was drugged, um, people would break in, uh, and they were essentially using her for sex slavery. Um, you know, I don't. I don't know how tender the years are in this uh, your audience, but was being used as a sex slave and was often being gang raped while she was in a drug state. Um, wow! And some of, some of the audio equipment actually could pick up the digital transmissions or the elf wave transmissions coming in when if she was a little too with it, you would hear on a whole different frequency uh, come into the recorder saying you need to drink more of the bottled water. Um, and they would, uh, at least in one of the recordings that was turned over to the police, she's screaming and yelling at these people, and they're digging through cabinets and looking under the refrigerator and under the stove, looking for some of the recording devices. And one of them they found, and a female voice says, I found it, how do I shut it off? Uh, and a male voice says, just hit some buttons and until it turns off. Um, but they didn't steal them because that's one thing with this type of stalking, is there, they may come in and move things around in your house, take appliances apart, uh, put all of your clothes in, on the couch out of your bedroom, move your sneakers around, leave cigarettes burning, but they won't steal anything. Because if you steal something, you can get a burglary charge, and the police will actually investigate that. They won't investigate trespassing or break, just plain breaking and entering without theft. They'll we've read a had, report. Yeah, i got to tell you this. We've had th- this one case that I'm very familiar with that, that I truly believe this person was a victim of what you're talking about. Um, we could not figure this out. And this is before we, we had, uh, well, this is back in the, in the or, or mid eighties. Um, people would come in and, and rearrange ever so slightly the furniture, um, among other things. So that was one thing, um, take things out, put things back into the refrigerator uh, move things, uh, it's, it's things that that you look at it, and and for that person to tell us, uh, my my partner and I, uh, this is being done. You look at the person like they've got two heads; they've lost their mind. You know. Well, and that's uh, what law enforcement does too. You know, when these people call the police, um, they say, "Well, somebody broke in. They they took they cut the pockets out of all my jeans. They took yeah. the buttons off three of my shirts, and they took my microwave apart and put it back together wrong." Well, you know, the first thing the police do is tell you to go see a psychiatrist. You know, they say, well, was anything taken? Well, no, nothing seems to be stolen. And the the next step is you, you know, in California, you get, I think, what they call it, a 5150. Uh, in Texas, they, you know, either take you themselves to uh, commit you for 24 hours or they recommend you to a psychiatrist. Wow. Okay. Well, I didn't mean to interrupt your, your cadence or uh, go ahead and continue with, with your, uh, with what you were saying there. Uh uh, this this young girl being victimized like this, my goodness. Well, I was I was lucky that uh, one of the um, lieutenants on the sex crimes unit here in San Antonio is a friend and a patient. So I went to him uh, with the story, with the recordings, uh, let him hear that. Um, of course, he was amazed. I mean, he said, "You know what? If anybody else came to me with this story, I would think they're crazy." But you know, you've had my life in your hands. I've known you for a long time, and if you say this is happening, you know, we'll check it out. 
Well, the problem in her case was the rohypnol. At that time, the stalking laws in Texas were different. They have been enforced a little bit more here lately. But the only thing they could really try to go for was the sexual assault. There's no way to prove the, you know, the, the directed energy or the, the electromagnetic component. So they tried to go for the rape part of it. And uh, unfortunately, as you know, rohypnol and GHB, as the, re- referred to as the rape date rape, date rape drugs, um, completely annihilate your memory. So um, she did not have enough memory um, to bring a case toward these people. Um, and that's when I said, you know what, if if nothing can be done about this, then I'm going to write this whole story in a book, uh, change the names so my publisher doesn't get in trouble, uh, and right. at least use this as an educational tool for other people that may be going through it. So, And that was the kind of the reasoning behind the book. And, and I just want to say this. Uh, it's my understanding that uh, you've concluded, and I don't want to get ahead of ourselves here, but I, I think for, uh, as a basis for what we're talking about, I, I think that it, it's uh, from reading what I've read that you've concluded that there is some type of a, a power structure, uh, a shadow government behind this, behind these attacks collectively, and, and, and they're mainly being perpetuated as this grand experiment uh, against the population to see how we can be controlled ultimately. Is that kind of a fair statement? Yeah, yeah. I mean, because if there was really not a whole lot, at least written, there are some written about this, but not a whole lot. And and that's why I wanted this through a legitimate publisher where people could get it at Barnes and Nobles or Amazon uh, and at least use, you know, the initials behind my name as you know as credible as they, those may be um at least to get the book out there and um um that at least opened some doors uh, luckily i have some friends in the cia that were forthright with me and they verified that yes we can do this we do have the technology to do this um and it opened some doors to some other people including a ton of victims and um by this time i've probably uh, either visited with, spoken to, or collaborated with in by email with probably five or 6,000 victims of this technology. And one thing that's noticeable right off the bat is it's being done with a, um, a playbook. You know, there's a methodology to it. Um, while each victim might have a der- different circumstance as to why they think they were victimized, when you look at the victimization itself, uh, the modus operandi, I guess you could say, uh, it's being done the same in every instance. Uh, it starts with stalking. Um, it you know, begins with ringing in the ears and tinnitus. Then you start hearing the voices and being attacked with directed energy. And then the stalking kind of backs off. Um, and then it seems to actually go on indefinitely. There's been a few cases where it's just kind of stopped in people. But most of the time, um, they'll notice that it waxes and wanes. Uh, they may get left alone for a little while, and then all of a sudden uh, it'll appear back, and they'll start to get attacked again. But the stalking does stop, and and one of the theories behind that is that they're, the stalking is just is part of a COINTEL program, and certainly for the psychological warfare aspect of it. But the other thing is to GPS someone by vicinity. Um, as long as they're with you 24/7 and within range of GPS that that allows your EEG to be um, basically cataloged and put into the system rather than have to drug that person and chip them. So, okay, so what you're saying is you're moving from um, a physical uh, physical type of, I'll use the word assault, to now an electronic, consistent electronic assault on the person. Is that right? Yeah, and... And like I said, when you're looking at the the methodology of it, uh, it's got to be experimental. I mean, especially from you know, from my strong suit, which is you know medicine and research. You know, you look at this, and I mean, it's in one city the victims may be mostly female, and it, it may be mostly sexual assault. In another one, it's being used for corporate espionage. Uh, in another, it's whistleblowers. There's a group in Palm Springs that's about 60 gay men that are all hearing the same voice of a, of a female voice named Lisa who talks to them while um, she uh, attacks them with directed energy weapons. Um, but when you take that whole mix nationally or globally and you mix it up, it's a random sample. 
even though each perpetrator group may be allowed to use it however they want, and that does seem to be the case. Um, they, they're given this technology and said, you know, carte blanche, use it however you want to use it. Uh, the group here I know uh, owns a real estate company, has people working in a mortgage broking firm. Um, they seem to be financing themselves not only by hiring this type of surveillance out, but by creating ghost mortgages. So, um, wow. Yeah, because they've got it sealed up from top to bottom as far as the mortgage industry. Um, people working at a major bank, um, Wells Fargo, um, initially was World Savings, got bought out by Wachovia, then Wells Fargo. Uh, several of the registered PIs working for this FBI agent are mortgage brokers there. Several of the PIs own a realty company. Um, and all of them are living in $600,000 homes, which in San Antonio is a pretty nice home. So, Wow. As a PI, I, I, apparently I missed that uh I missed the uh, notice on the bulletin board for uh, uh, operatives in that uh, in that type of work. Um, it, my goodness! And now I want to just make it clear uh, too, uh, Doctor Hall, that, that you know that uh, uh, you've got the uh, the floor here, and anything and everything especially if you've never discussed or disclosed anything before or were, were prevented from, you know, or felt it wasn't the right venue, feel free to speak out on anything here because we're after the truth here. We're looking at the larger picture. We're looking at the, um, I mean, we're looking at the end game as far as I'm concerned. I mean, this is huge. And so uh, this has got to be run, operated, superintended by at the very least, the Central Intelligence Agency, I mean, all that MK Ultra stuff that involved all the universities and the millions of dollars changed over into whatever it is now, whatever incarnation it is now, uh, but but for a purpose um, and for popula- or for the controlling of the population. But, but um, what am I missing here? Because it seems like, okay, what's the next step or is there a next step? Well, I mean, I can tell you one of the more scary theories I've heard, and this is coming from Dr. Robert Duncan, who's also written on this subject and actually was a subcontractor in the research uh, field uh, with the CIA and worked on the program that we're talking about, worked on some of the technology. Um, in some of my conversations with him, um, you know, basically his feeling is that everyone uh, is already being controlled um, and that the victims that you're seeing are the people who can't be controlled. Therefore, they're being harassed uh, to be minimized uh, as delusional or schizophrenic so nobody else listens to them. Mm. Um, and that's a pretty scary thought. <laughs> yeah. Because yeah. Um, um, that means our government officials are being controlled and everybody's uh, being controlled. Um, certainly, I think the end game, um, as conspiratorial as this sounds, and, and, and I'll be the first to admit, I try to base everything I write about and everything I talk about on, on fact, and certainly don't want to be uh, labeled a conspiracy theorist. But this can only be heading one direction. Um, you know, guns and taxes won't control everyone. Um, there's always going to be the people like, you know, like me. You know, I live in a rural area. I've lived without electricity before. Uh, you know, like the song says, you know, I can I can skin a deer and I can run a trout line. Uh, I can pump water out of a well. That's what I've got, you know. Um, you know, you know I live in Texas. You know, uh, most of us that live here are probably as equally armed as our um, National Guard. You know, short of having a helicopter, you know, most of us have just about everything else. So, you know, you know, coming on property and, and having another Ruby Ridge is going to be really messy with just about anybody here. Um, taxes, you know, those are escapable. You know, I can, you know, well, there's a lot of us in rural areas that can plant a garden, eat a deer, pump our own water. But electromagnetic technology controls everyone. So, you know, especially mm. when it's either heart-based or satellite-based, that, that will be the mechanism of control. And for those listeners that don't believe that, Putin came out with, with from Russia, came out um, with comments about a year ago, where he said that uh, whichever country uh, had the best directed energy and electromagnetic weapons would control the globe without bullets or missiles. 
And what I thought was amazing when he came out with that comment, none of our major media covered it, not one. As a matter of fact, not many of the conspiracy theory sites even covered it. The only person I got a call from was El Spectador uh, out of Colombia. Uh, they're the, the largest news agency uh, in uh, Colombia and distribute um, um, by email and by paper, newspaper, to just about all of South America. Uh, I got a call from one of their reporters uh, who had looked me up on my website and said, you know what, I don't know if you heard this comment, but would you be willing to write a piece that we can use um, in our newspaper? Uh, so I basically wrote what I felt about the comments he made and you know, my uh, experience with the technology and working with victims that are already being victimized by it. Uh, and that I know of, that's the only news agency that even covered that. Wow. Wow. Okay. And, and, and that's by design, I have to believe, as opposed to by lack of interest or the topic being too edgy. I mean, th- th- this is, to me, by design. Do you agree? Oh, yeah. Uh, the major media here is definitely being controlled. Um, you know, right now, being pretty well controlled by the by the Democratic Party. Uh, if you look at you know, you know how forgiving they've been to you know our, our current president, um, but um, yeah, I mean George Norrie and and you guys and and some of the other alternative news sources have really been you know the only ones to cover uh, any of this, which is kind of sad. And, and uh, one of the reasons that uh, freedom from covert surveillance and harassment exists, there's another more scientific based organization that uh, I sit on. Um, uh, called ISA Act, or the uh, uh, International Center Against Abuse of Covert Technologies. And that's actually a group of professional people, uh, multidisciplinary, that are actually looking this, at this from more of a scientific uh, point of view. Um, for those interested, that's ISA Act, I-C-A-A-C-T dot org. Um, and our focus is you know, trying to get as much scientific data behind this as we can to fight it, uh, and public education. Um, and on the educational front, there's also been a screenplay written on my book, uh, and hopefully it'll be uh, actually um, in movie theaters uh, in not too far from now. Uh, right now we're in pre-production, and those interested that want to be a part of that, uh, that is um, newbreedmovie.com. Newbreedmovie, um, okay. Yeah, dot com. Dot com. Okay. You know, because educating the public has a large bearing on this. I, I found that out after I um, released the book. I had a lot of people contact me after you know being on George Norrie, uh, seeing my website, and um, contact me saying, you know what, you know, our son was complaining of this for years. Uh, we've had him on every psych med. He's seen three different psychiatrists. He's had electroconvulsive therapy. And yes, believe it or not, I've, I've come across families that actually let a psychiatrist shock their loved ones because they were complaining of electronic harassment. And of course, none of it worked. Uh, and they said, until we heard you on George Norrie or we heard you on one of your radio interviews, we didn't understand what it was. And, and now we do know what he's going through. And, and we're sorry we did the things we did because we just didn't understand. And I've actually had a number of families come to San Antonio to meet with me with their loved one, whether it's a, a child, a, a wife, a spouse, um, that's going through this just to talk to me so they can get a better understanding about it. So, I mean, the educational efforts really do pay off. How, how do you fight against or how do you protect yourself against something like this, doctor? If well, what I, I mean, it's difficult. Ahead. And, and uh, what, I, what I tell the... A lot of the victims, I wish the victims would, would contact me when they first notice the stalking because that's the opportunity you have to really prevent a lot of this. Um, but, you know, most of us you know, don't want to be labeled as crazy, so you see the same car sitting outside your driveway or following you home from work or following you to work. You know, in, you know, in the back of your mind, you're thinking this person's following me, but you try to, you know, blow it off and think, well, yeah, I don't want to be labeled as crazy. It's probably somebody driving the same direction, or it's probably somebody that's going next door and just parking in front of my house every night. So, you know, they let it go. Um, if you can catch it during the stalking phase, most law enforcement agencies will take stalking um, serious. Most right. states now have anti-stalking laws. In Texas, they were changed, or if you notice the same person following you twice, 
you know, you can get a restraining order without uh, having to prove that they've injured you, which it used to be you had to prove physical injury. Um, so that's actually the the best time to put to nip it in the bud because if they can't stalk you, um, then they're going to be forced to try to surreptitiously drug you somehow where they can actually implant you with a chip to track you by. Um, or get a hold of your phone to put um, software on it where they can track your phone. Um, assuming that most of these PI agencies probably don't have access to AT&T or Verizon, you know, to actually have that done um, without a warrant, which the, right. the, allegedly the police have to have a warrant to track you by your phone. Um, but if you can nip it in the bud at the stalking, that'll stop a lot. Now, once you're actually in the throes of electronic harassment, at least the, our theories now, if you're not chipped, or even if you are chipped, that it's basically done by EEG manipulation. Um, then you have to, there's some subtle ways of altering your EEG, um, you know, to foil the stalking. Um, you can use shielding. You know, we have had people, we've tested people, put them in Faraday cages or anechoic chambers. That will minimize it, but, you know, that the problem with that is you can't, you know, live your life living in a Faraday cage. <laughs> Uh, yeah, uh, uh, from a bubble boy to uh, a Faraday cage boy, I guess, and, and I, I don't mean to make light of it, but, but, but seriously, I, I, I mean it's if we are to accept, and, and I do accept that this is taking place. I mean, I, I, just look at the history behind this, the MK Ultra program. Look at the universities involved in this. Look at the uh, government agencies involved in this, and, and then, and then, as you said, Doctor, look at the end game. Um, you know what the end game is. It, it just it makes sense um, that this would be taking place. Now, how is this funded? Uh, I mean, who's paying for this? Because well, I, I know a, P, a PI. I mean, look, uh, you know the the human resource aspect of this for PIs and others uh, uh, it costs money. Well, and you know, and that's the big question most of these victims get. You know, they'll say, well, you know, you're a housewife. You know, you're not a political radical. You know, you're not a member of a terrorist group. You know, why would anybody want to spend? Or the police will tell you. You know, do you know the vast amounts of money they would have to spend to do this to you? And that's just really not the truth. You know, our tax dollars have paid for these satellite launches, and our tax dollars have paid, paid for paid for HARP. So it already exists. It's there. And as you know, satellite surveillance is the most inexpensive way you know, to surveil someone or track someone. You know, even if it's just basic old technology satellite tracking, you know, it's much cheaper to slap a tracker on underneath somebody's car than to have a personnel follow them around from a PI aspect. Um, so th the expenditure is really not there. Initially in the organized stalking, if they're stalking you, there's some expenditure. But as a rule, the people that we've caught um, and counter-surveil that are doing the hands-on stalking are not the people actually controlling the electronics. You know, that's done remotely from a computer. Um, the people they typically have doing the stalking are, you know, kind of no-account um, people anyway, um, you know, guys with criminal history or criminal past that, you know, you know, with the opportunity to be able to, you know, rape or pillage uh, will do this kind of work, you know, for you relatively cheaply. Um, and certainly will do it relatively cheaply at the risk of having it done to themselves. So um, it, there's really not a lot of money being spent. And like I said, you know, like the group here that we've counter-surveilled, they're financing themselves by hiring this out for corporate espionage, uh, hiring it out to the wealthy as, as one of the uh, a physician um, that has used this um, former FBI agent before to um, harass competitors. His exact words, he said, I'm hiding them from my wife in case I need to make her look crazy during a divorce. And <laughs> I've been contacted since by another woman who's getting a divorce from a very prominent physician in uh, Texas who is doing just that. Uh, and it's the same investigator. She's identified the same investigator. Um, parking in front of her house, shining bright lights in the window. Um, she thought her house had uh, had microphones and cameras put in it because they always knew what she was thinking or what her plans were when indeed it was the group that's using electronic surveillance on her. So, I mean, it is being hired out among the wealthy uh, for corporate espionage and, you know, for messing with competitors or, uh, or harassing ex-spouses. And, you know, and that even goes all the way up to the NSA. I don't know if you'd seen the, the news, and I brought this up on George Norrie's show, 
um, that uh, the NSA, one of the things they admitted is that several of their agents have been guilty of victimizing uh, romantic interest using NSA technology. And uh, it, it happens so frequently within the NSA that they call it love int. Uh, instead of hum int for human intelligence, sig int for signals intelligent, love int, love int for love intelligence. Uh, and of course, wow. you know, Congresswoman Feinstein said she was going to get right to the bottom of that and have a report back for the public that it was only one or two cases a year. Come on, <laughs> human nature. Human nature dictates that. You know, if, you know, if you just got a divorce and you're working for the NSA and you can harass and watch your spouse, you're going to do it. So of it, it's, it, it's going to be more than one or two cases a year. But the fact that it happens so commonly that they have a pet name for it is kind of disconcerting. Absolutely. Your uh, website here says a new breed of satellite terrorism in America. What about the emergence of drone technology? How does this play into all this? Well, you know, a lot of this can be done from a drone, too, and I've certainly talked to a lot of victims uh, who have, you know, noticed – what they think are drones um, around them. And, you know, they have drones down to a fairly miniaturized size now. Uh, as a matter of fact, um, some of the major municipalities in Texas are now using drones. For instance, Austin, Texas, uh, now has drones uh, that the law enforcement uses when they have to serve high-risk warrants, um, like serving warrants to meth labs, um, or where they are expecting a standoff with police, they'll drone the area before they send in ground law enforcement. So you now, I, I hopefully this type of technology is not on those. But that's one of the reasons we really need to look into legislation against drones. And I and I know Texas has passed legislation making it illegal for individuals. To own drones, because you know, I don't know how much research you've done into that, but you know, drone—you can get a drone that's equipped almost as well as the military's for about six grand. So, I mean, yeah, and once you learn how to fly, that. yeah, Great. and uh, and how to wow. spy on your neighbor. So, wow, yeah. When we were active in surveillance, when we were active in surveillance, so this uh, this was just coming out where. Uh, and even there were some news groups in the PI industry that were um, advertising they would build a drone-like uh, vehicle where you could actually position it. It's, it would be quiet, the, the engineering behind it. it. Relatively expensive, but you could uh, have audio and, vi and, and video surveillance of your target without, um, we, you know, without having to expose yourself with a video camera or a van or uh, in a vehicle. So we know this is coming out, uh, and I can verify, not that you need validation, but just from a, a PI perspective, I can tell you that, that uh, as of 2010, 11, yeah, this is starting to hit the, um, uh, hit the news groups. So this is rather disconcerting. Wow. Now, I, now on a similar thing, I, now I did, uh, and I didn't mention this in the book, but uh, the girl that I wrote about, I wouldn't call it a drone vehicle, but the uh, the PI group did leave a vehicle parked directly behind her condominium in the parking lot um, that was um, being used as a repeater uh, or a range extender. Um, I, they were apparently having trouble um, getting some of the signals out of her condo for remote reception. Um, you know, in her case. Most of this was being done electronically, remotely, with satellite surveillance. But um, one thing I will say is that um, the FLIR imaging you get from, and you can see indoors with FLIR imaging from satellite now, by the way, for your readers. But uh, and it's come a long way. It's not the swirls of red and blue and like you you know have seen in the movies. It, it looks like a black and white photo, but it's still not good enough, um, I guess, for people who are looking for sexual images. So for that, they often will still break in and try to put uh, either a Wi-Fi-based camera in or an RF-based camera. And in her case, it was an RF-based camera um, that was uh, had been replaced. Uh, her motion detector and her alarm system had been replaced with an RF-based camera, which you know has a pretty low range uh, of reception. 
So they had actually put a uh, repeater um, mounted uh, in a vehicle that they left parked outside of her condo so they could actually get the signal out of the condo across the parking lot and uh, receivable to a, a home that was across the street. So, but that, you know, no, it, no, no, that would involve breaking and entering into her apartment and replacing equipment that's already there, correct? Yeah. Okay. All right. Wow. Wow. Oh, oh they did more than that. They, they There were times that we came in and the mirror in the bathroom wall had been moved around. Switches had been removed and replaced. Uh, one wall was painted a different color. Uh, while she was at work. Uh, I mean, these people are so sure they're not going to get caught that they're pretty brazen. Uh, And as a matter of fact, this particular individual in San Antonio that's a former FBI agent has been named by um, four or five victims now in the state of Texas. And when you call to complain about him to the DPS uh, in Austin, um, they'll tell you that, uh, that he's never had a complaint. One question. Um, have you ever came across a case where somebody was killed for breaking and entering who was part of this network or somebody was caught red-handed and uh, police charges were filed or the police got involved? And there was no, because that that can't happen. Um, once before they start the breaking and entering, they're watching pretty close, and they're also watching your neighbors. So, And it's amazing that the, um, the people they target tend, tend to be loners, at least uh, the group here mostly does this for uh, harassment purposes and sexual assault purposes. So the the women, the female victims that I've had to deal with here and nationwide, most of the female victims are women that are divorced and living alone. And you got to remember when they're watching my satellite, they're watching 24-7. This is done in shift work. And like I said, we've counter-surveilled this group. Um, it's usually three or four people working a 12-hour shift during the day being relieved by three or four people working a 12-hour shift during the night. So they know when you're going to come or go. And, you know, the other scary part of this technology is they're also hearing your thoughts. So not only do they know where you're going, when you're home and when you're not, they know what you're planning and what you're not. You're referring to, by the way, the, the people, uh, and I think you've, I think I've heard that you use the term social outliers, uh, people that don't have any, any, uh, oh, the, well, I think a descriptive term speaks for itself, but uh, yeah, uh, you know, on the other side of the hour, uh, but by the way, uh, uh, Dr. Hall, I've got probably. I haven't counted them, uh, well over 35, maybe 40 questions from listeners all across the United States, Canada, and uh, even in the U.K. listening live to this broadcast right now about uh, directed to you about this. Uh, but I want to remind folks, you're listening to Dr. John Hall. His website, ladies and gentlemen, is satweapons.com. That's satweapons.com. You've got to get this book uh, to really fully appreciate and understand what we're talking about here tonight. Uh, I, I think this is uh, an emerging epidemic. I mean, you're a do- you're a doctor. Would you classify this this as an epidemic uh, that's taking place? Oh, certainly. I mean, this has grown exponentially just in the ten years I've been dealing with it. Um, and we estimate, at least based on numbers of people that have filled out. Um, questionnaires, and not just that group. Freedom's one of many groups dealing with victims of this technology. Um, just in the United States alone, we estimate probably 300,000. Um, and like I said, I've heard from multiple people from every country here recently. Um, you know, and uh, you know, I, I talked to Mitch Santel uh, about this. Um, here recently, I've been having a lot of victims contact me from New Zealand and Australia. Um, that are um, having problems with this too, but the UK, uh, Yemen, uh, all through the Middle East, um, uh, the one one country I hadn't heard from any victims until recently was Japan, uh, and then the last couple of weeks I've had a number of emails from victims in Japan as well. So you are the go-to guy, and it, it really you are the go-to guy for this type of uh, well this this epidemic. Uh, by far, I, I would classify you, having done research prior to tonight's program, uh, I- any time I would put in a search engine the um, uh, various uh, uh, qualifiers, uh, your name would come up. So yeah, yeah, I've got to say, folks, you're, you're lucky to – we're lucky to have on with us 
Dr. John Hall. We're folks forever against the top of the hour break. We're going to be back with uh, with a whole list of questions. One of the things, Dr. Hall, on the other side, I, I want to ask you about because this came to me, and regular regular listeners will remember uh, celebrity suicides. Remember me mentioning that to you folks before. I've got some questions about uh, celebrity issues as well as. Um, a couple of other things, including but not limited to, uh, uh, um, well, I'll, I'll just leave it at celebrity, celebrity suicide, celebrity events uh, on the other side of the break. Folks, you're listening to the Hagman and Hagman Report on this, the 11th day of September 2013. 